almost every time when I do a video doing some jointing and planing of rough lumber, I get one question, which is a really good question. And the question that comes up is when I'm jointing and planing, why don't I just use a jointer for all sides instead of using both the jointer and the planer? And when the question comes up, I do type out an answer to try to explain it. And I hope I'm clear in my explanation, but this is an answer to a question that I can really show easily in a video. So I've got all this black walnut here that I now need to start milling. And the first step is to come to the jointer. And when I do that, I could show you why you need to go to the planer afterwards and not just use the jointer if you want to have perfectly square wood. Now jointers like this big king jointer right here can do a whole bunch of different things, but for the majority of their life, they get used to do two things. And they do those two things really, really well. Number one is to take uneven cupped or twisted lumber and get you one good clean flat surface on the bottom. And the second is then to put that flat surface up against this fence right here and get you a perfect 90 on the second edge. And all jointers have the same main components. You have an outfeed table right here, which you can adjust up and down, but you usually just leave it exactly where it is. You have an infeed table right here, and that one you adjust up and down, depending on how much material you're trying to take off. For mine, I loosen off this knob right here, and then I can use this handle to move the table up and down. And it runs coplanar to this one right here. So it's level, but it can move up and down, but in relation to this one back here. So as you move it down, the cutting head, which is right here, cuts off exactly the right amount, so then it perfectly comes and lines up with the outfeed table here. All jointers will have a cutter head right here, and they'll come in different sizes and different types. Mine is a 12 inch. You can get them bigger and you can also get them smaller. And mine has a spiral head right here with these carbide inserts. I prefer the spiral head because these little carbide inserts right here, you can loosen off and flip around every time they're dull. And if you happen to process material that has a rock or a nail in it, and you hit one of your blades, you can just replace that blade instead of the entire blade. These are also quieter and less taxing on your motor. And the last key component and something you wanna be very precise about is this fence back here. You wanna make sure that it's set at perfectly 90 degrees. And then when you go to mill your wood, you know everything will come out at a perfect 90. And then when you move on to do joinery and the rest of your project, you'll cuss and swear a whole lot less because everything's fitting together nice. Okay, so this is a chunk of seven by four black walnut and it's all rough as you can see. The first step for any wood that eventually becomes furniture is obviously for the tree to get cut down and then that tree is milled into rough dimensions. The rough dimension lumber then will go to a kiln or just sit outside and in the kiln or sitting outside while it's drying, that wood is gonna move and twist and bend and try and find an equilibrium. Depending on the tension in the wood, it might shift a bit right or left. It might dry at different rates inside of a piece of wood. And as the wood dries, it also shrinks. This is why two by fours or two by sixes or two by eights aren't actually two by fours or two by sixes or two by eights in the store. They start off cut at two by fours, but when they go through the drying process, the wood shrinks a little bit and then that wood also gets planed and milled so that it's nice and smooth when you get it. And that takes off some of the two by four. So you end up with one and a half by three and a half. So same thing with all dimensioned lumber. It's gonna shrink a little bit and it's gonna move a little bit. So the first step of the jointer is to try get everything back level again. So first thing that I wanna do is this bottom side right here, I wanna take from being a rough piece of wood that has a little bit of a cup in it. And I'm gonna run it over the planer enough times until it's perfectly smooth. So now you can see on the first two passes here, it's finding the high spots. So there's a high spot right here, and then there's two high spots right here. And now it's starting to take that off in layers until we get all the way down. It looks like this right here is gonna be our lowest spot. So I'm just gonna keep on passing over until eventually the whole bottom of the board looks just like this. And now with two more passes, you can see we're getting close to being done. This whole part right here and all along here has now become nice and flat. And we just have this last little bit right here to make it so that it's all perfectly flat. So now step one for this surface is all done. It's perfectly flat, everything's good to go. But you'll notice here, if I put a, a square on, there's nothing square about the edge of this board right here. And same thing on this other side. They're just both out of whack. So we need to choose one side and then square it up perfectly so that it's at a perfect 90 in reference to this face right here. So I'll take this big chunk of wood here and I'm gonna put the milled face up against the edge of this fence right here. And then I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna be watching that there's no gap that appears here. And I'm gonna hold it against that fence and then pass it over. And then it's gonna do the exact same thing on that side of the wood that it did here but it's gonna do it in relation to this fence and cut it off so it's 90 to this face. 
If I don't hold that board straight to this fence, then it doesn't work. It has to be held perfectly against that fence. And that's why it's so important that that fence is at 90. I want you to notice right down here right now, I can hold the board up against that fence, but if I just set the board on here and let gravity do its thing, it actually moves that board out because of the bottom of this board. So you're gonna put pressure against the side of it like this, so it's nice and tight against that fence as it goes over the blades. Okay, and now this side is done. And if everything was set right, if we put the square on here and line it up, that should be at a perfect 90 degrees, which luckily it is. So now the question is, if that works so well on these two sides, why don't I just do it on this side and this side? And that's because the way that most woodwork machines are designed is the cutter head or the blade or the router or whatever it is, wants to cut in reference to something. So the reason I was able to get this one at perfect 90 is because we were going off of a reliable flat surface right here. And when I held it up against that fence, the blade was able to make the cuts in relation to this surface right here. So right now, if I flip this whole board over, it actually can't go in relation to anything. I mean, you could hold this up against that, but this is the shorter edge and then you have the longer one and try and hold this one to that one and get it 90. You might be able to get it 90, but the important thing is that this surface won't be perfect parallel to this surface. It might be 90 right here down there, but it might be shaped a bit like a trapezoid and not have an equal distance, which if you're going to do a table glue up and you want all your boards uniform, you need to be cutting in relation to this surface right here, not this one right here. So when we did our first passes, we weren't going in relation to anything. I was just passing it over and kind of letting the knife and the table and the way that it was structured find me a flat surface. And slowly as I went over it, there was actually a little bit of a wobble in the board. And as it was going over, it was taking off the high spots and eventually, enough high spots were touching both the in feed and the out feed part of the table that it was able to make us that flat surface. So if I flip this board over now and I go ahead and do that, it's once again gonna find its own flatness, but kind of on its own, not in relation to this. And if you look right here, you'll see that this board down here isn't actually flat across the bottom. Way over here, it hangs way down. So you're at about three and 13 sixteenths. And then over on this side, you're at about three and nine sixteenths. So the board, when we pass it over the planer, would likely end up with a flat surface, but it would take this side off right here and then kind of come up at an angle, which means that our board wouldn't be a uniform thickness from top to bottom. And we wanna make sure that whatever the final measurement is down here is exactly parallel to this top line right here. So this is gonna be a little repetitive, but basically I can get a flat surface here using the jointer. It just will not be parallel to the bottom here. So if you're doing a table glue up or a panel glue up or anything, you want your boards to be all exactly, let's say you were choosing three and a half inches. You want them all to be exactly three and a half inches. And it could be three and a half inches on this side and it could be three and three quarters on this side. And it could be down to two and three quarters on this side. We're not actually sure. So a planer to a degree is the inverse of a jointer where now you have a bed on the bottom and you have a cutter on the top. So you can put a board in and the bottom is now your reference and it feeds through, but it stays flat. And that cutter now shaves some off the top, but in relation to the bottom. And then you'll progressively take some off until you reach your final thickness. And then you know you have uniform boards. That's why you have to go from the jointer to the planer and not do it all on just this one. And the exact same applies now to this side. Let's say we were trying to get exactly seven inch wide boards. This one might be seven and a quarter out here and it might be seven and a half there. So we can't just run this across on the jointer and then end up with the same width of boards. To get this side square, you can either run it through the planer if your board is wide enough and it won't tip at all, or you can take it over to your table saw and then you can run this up against your table saw face and then your blade will exactly cut you off a uniform distance from this edge or your track saw or whatever you're going to use but now you have a flat and predictable surface on this side to cut this one off so it's nice and flat and uniform. 